Welcome to the Folktale Project. This is Dan Shells. Today we have our final Korean folktale of this week. And this story is, well, it's a tale of trickery and deception gone very, very wrong. This is The Rabbit's Eyes. There was trouble down in the fish world under the waves. Indeed, every creature with fins and a tail was in distress, for the king of the fishes was suffering with a dreadful pain in his mouth. It had come about in this way. One day, while swimming around in the waters outside his palace, the king of the fishes saw something hanging in the water that looked as if it were good to eat. So at once, his majesty gulped it down when, oh horrors, he found he had barely escaped swallowing a fishhook, which stuck fast in his gills. It had been baited by some fishermen up in a boat on the sea top. When the king of the fishes found the dreadful thing in his mouth, he jerked himself away. The line broke, but the hook remained, giving the king a fever and much pain. How to get the iron out and heal his majesty was now the question. All the wise creatures in the ocean, from the turtle to the gudgeon, and from the tittleback to the whale, were summoned to the palace to see what could be done. Many a sage noddle was bent, and eye blinked and fin wagged, as the marine doctors talked the matter over in the council. The turtle was considered the most learned and expert of them all. Many were his feelings of the king's pulse and his lookings down into the throat before Dr. Turtle would pronounce what was the real trouble or write a prescription for his patient. Finally, after consultation with the other doctors that had fins and tails or were in scales and shells, it was decided that nothing less than a poultice made of rabbit's eyes would loosen the hook and end his majesty's troubles. So Dr. Turtle was ordered to go to the seashore and invite a rabbit to come down into the world under the sea, that they might make a poultice of his eyes and apply the warm mess to the king's throat. Arriving on the sea beach at the foot of a high hill, Dr. Turtle, looking far up, found Mr. Rabbit out of his burrow and taking a promenade along the edge of the forest. Forthwith, Dr. Turtle waddled along the beach and part way up the hill, climbing hard until he began to puff and blow. He had enough breath left, however, to salute Brother Bunny with a good morning. Very politely, the rabbit returned the greeting. It is a hot day, said Dr. Turtle, as he pulled out his handkerchief, wiped his horny forehead, and cleaned the sand out of his claws. Yes, but that scenery is so fine. Dr. Turtle, that you must be glad you're out of the water to see such lovely mountains. Don't you think Korea is a fine country? There's no land in the world so beautiful as ours. The mountains, the rivers, the seashore, the forests, the flowers. If Dr. Turtle had let the rabbit run on praising his own country, he would have forgotten his errand. But, thinking of His Majesty, the suffering fish king, with the cruel hook in his mouth, Dr. Turtle interrupted Bunny, saying, Oh, yes, Brother Bunny. This view of the landscape and country is all very beautiful, but... It can't compare to the gems and jewels, trees and flowers, sweet odors and everything lovely down in the world under the sea. At this, the rabbit pricked up his ears. It was all new to him. He had never heard that there was anything under the water but common fishes and seaweed, and when these were decayed and washed up on the seashore, well, he had his ideas about them. They did not smell sweet at all. Now, he heard a different story. His curiosity was roused. What you tell me, my friend, is interesting. Go on. Thereupon, Dr. Turtle proceeded to tell of the most wonderful mountains and valleys down on the floor of the deep sea, with every kind of rare water plant, red, orange color, green, blue, white, and trees of gold and silver, besides flowers of every color and delightful perfume. You surprise me said Brother Bunny, getting more interested. Yes, and all sorts of good things to eat and drink, with music and dancing, handsome serving maids and everything nice. Come along and be our guest. 
Our king has sent me to invite you. May I go? asked Brother Bunny, delighted. Yes, at once. Get on my back and I'll carry you. So the rabbit ran and the turtle waddled to the water's edge. Now hold fast to my front shell, said Dr. Turtle. We're going under the water. Down, down below the deep blue waves they sank until they arrived at the king's palace. There, the rabbit found everything was true as told by the turtle. The colors, the rich gems were as he had said. Dr. Turtle introduced Brother Bunny to some of the princes and princesses of the kingdom, and these showed their guests the sights and treasures of the palace, while Dr. Turtle attended the Council of Doctors to announce the success of his errand. But while Mr. Rabbit was enjoying himself, thinking this was the most wonderful place in the world, he overheard them talking. Then he found out why they had brought him there and shown him such horrors. Horrified at the idea of losing his eyes, he determined to save his sight and play the tortoise a smart trick. However, of this he told no one. So when he was politely informed by the royal executioners that he must give up his eyes to make the king well, Brother Bunny broke out with equally polite regrets. Really, I am so sorry that his majesty is ill, and you must excuse me that I cannot help him immediately. For the eyes I have in my head now are not real eyes, but only crystal. I was afraid that seawater might hurt my sight, so I took out my ordinary eyes, buried them in the sand, and put these on, crystal ones, which I usually wear in very dusty or wet weather. At this, the faces of the royal officers fell. How could they break the news to his majesty and disappoint him? Brother Bunny seemed to be really sorry for them, and spoke up. Oh, don't feel bad about it. If you will allow me to return to the beach, I'll dig them up and return in time for the poultice-making, said the rabbit. So, getting on Dr. Turtle's back, Brother Bunny was soon out of the water and on land. In a jiffy, he jumped off, scampered away, and reached the woods, showing only his cotton tail. Soon, he was out of sight. Dr. Turtle shed tears and returned to tell how a rabbit had outwitted him. And that is The Rabbit's Eyes, a folktale from Korea, about, well, a bunny, a very smart and interested bunny. He really does, he gives the opportunity to the turtle to prove him wrong in all of his beliefs about the world under the sea. And he is proven wrong. All of those preconceived notions are false. However, he wasn't really brought down there to enjoy the world under the sea, was he? Good thing he's so smart. This is Dan Scholes for the Folktale Project. Don't forget that you can subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, Overcast, anywhere you like to get your podcasts. You can follow us on Twitter at Folktale Project. You can find us on Auto Radio, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Spotify, anywhere you like to listen. And you can always head over to folktaleproject.com where you'll find a new story waiting for you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Next week, we'll be back with three new tales. And don't forget that if you'd like to help support the podcast, you can head over to patreon.com slash folktaleproject, where for as little as a dollar a month, you can get early access to every story told. As always, thank you so much for listening. <laughs>